Hello, welcome to the channel. Uh, my name is Victor, and I'm going to be your anchor for this awesome training. So this is the Data Analytics Essentials uh, series. Uh, in this series, we're going to be considering Excel. Uh, we're going to be looking at SQL, uh, SQL, and we're going to also be looking at Tableau. Very, very exciting um, uh, series that we're going to be having. Okay, so if you have interest in data analytics, uh, uh, we are going to also have another series that is going to be the Python SPSS uh, track. And uh, there's also a series on the channel that uh, is going to be Power BI. I said that introduction. So as time permits me, I'm going to go through uh, the Power BI and SQL series. So but for this series, we're going to be running Excel, SQL, and Tableau. So if you want to become... Uh, a data analyst, if you want to be able to do visualization, if you want to be able to provide intelligence, insight from data, then this course is for you. If you are taking this uh, training, either through our remote program or our physical classes, we're going to have the hands-on sessions. Uh, but for the focus of this training is to lay all of the foundation you need to become a data analyst. So we're going to be running through all of the concepts, we're going to be running through all of the very, very crucial things, especially the process, because if you understand the process, then you can deliver data analytics services across different niches, whether it's going to be healthcare, NGO, uh, finance, or tech, in whatever field. Okay, welcome to this series. If you are new, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, you can share this also to your friends that are interested in data analytics. Let's get down to business. So I'm going to be using this material as my instructor guide to train you on data analytics. We have uh, about nine modules, nine chapters. So this is the very first module. And we're going to be looking at the need of data analytics. So why do we need to do data analytics, right? Uh, what are we going to learn? What are some of our objectives? We want to see the evolution, uh, how data analytics have revolved around different facets, different ages, how it has progressed from one stage to the other. Then we're going to see different types of analysis. We're going to see data analytics in action, right? And have some kind of business understanding because one of the reasons why you need a data analyst is to help provide a guideline on making these business decisions. So if you are a data analyst, your goal is to make sure that you can provide insights to data because data is going to come in a very disorganized in a very uh unorganized manner but it's a responsibility to put these things together and try to see some kind of pattern to try to see some kind of uh, a relationship uh, between variables and between columns between labels and we're going to see uh, most of these things in detail so in chapter one we're going to be laying some foundation then also we're going to learn how to create our portfolio. Now, don't forget that the purpose of this course is to make you at least up to an intermediate level data analyst. You're able to function and be able to offer this service to companies, to individuals, and even uh, for your career. So one thing you're going to be doing across this course is to make sure that you are journaling the process. As you're learning Excel, you're journaling that. As you're learning the functions, as you're learning SQL, as you're learning Tableau, you're journaling the entire process. So because you also want to have an online portfolio because the online portfolio speaks about your skill set. So we're going to be having a GitHub account. We're going to be having a Medium account. We're going to be having a Tableau uh, public uh, account where we are going to be pushing most of the things we are going to be working on. Because if you do your CV at the end of the day, you want to, all of the case studies we're going to look at in class, you want to be able to have them properly archived. So we're going to see, uh, do some projects. So let's look at some introduction. So today's world generates quite a lot of data. I'm talking about peta pet peta Peta, peta, peta bytes of data, as in data in, in multiples of billions. Even an airline generates quite a lot of uh, uh, data just in one single flight, right? Your brain generates quite a lot of data. You see most companies uh, work with a lot of data. 
And but data analytics is all about how can we answer some questions? How can we see some trends? How can we extract insights for us to make decisions? So later on, we're going to look at data analytics process. In the video uh, on the channel where I talked about what is data science, we said that the end goal of doing data science, doing data analytics, I'm going to differentiate these terms later on, is that we want to be able to make better decisions. If we can see that there's a relationship between age and intelligence, a, 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 a relationship between uh, any capacity and um, how well people do in the society, then we can be able to make decisions. If we can be able to know causative factors, uh, what are the dependent factors that make people to fall sick or fall ill, then we can make better decisions. If we can know within our enterprise, what are the different goods and services that we are selling that contributes the most to our profit, then we can be make better decisions. So some of the topics we're going to consider in this model is analytics in real time. So there are times where you don't just want to wait until you have collected the data. You want to be analyzing right on time. And also we want to also be able to build our portfolio. One thing you're also going to be introduced is blogging because you want to be a blog. You want to be able to journal all of the activities that you're going to be working on. So let's look at analytics in real time. What began with a small number of organizations using analytics to uncover insight into customer employee behavior has become an outright revolution in how business decisions are made. So there's difference between looking at historical data to check patterns and descriptive information about the organization. And we just want to go beyond that and let's try looking at how we can compile, analyze most of this data into monthly, quarterly basis. Because most of the times, data uh, will not be compiled and analyzed immediately. Most of the times, it's going to be after. Now, the primary goal of traditional data analysis is to present information in a way that is easy for non-technical decision makers to understand. So all of the C-level executives, like the chief executive officer, chief financial officer, chief uh, medical director, chief, uh, uh, all of those C-level, chief finance, chief technical, chief security, chief uh, executive officer, all of those C-level executives or managerial level executives, they would need you to present the data, the analysis you have done in a very non-technical way, in a way that is very explanatory. So that is the job of the data analyst. Examples of insight uncovered through traditional analysis is going to help us understand things like product performance. We have in our inventory up to a thousand products. Not all the products are going to be doing so well. So we want to see how each product is performing. We want to see our company profitability. We want to see our inventory lead times. When do we need to restock? I want to see which advertisement program is actually doing well. So if you if you do marketing on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on, on social media, other social media platforms, on uh, paid uh, uh, newspaper sites and the rest, I should bring in all of this data, which one is doing the, the most for us. Don't forget the end goal is that you want to be able to quickly gather this data, analyze them, then be able to make decisions. Now that brings us to the different types of analysis. So there's what to call descriptive analysis. What happened? So most of the times in descriptive analysis, we're looking at the past. In predictive, we try to tell what might happen in the future. So here we're looking at trends analysis. We're looking at patterns. We're looking at uh, uh, some sort of relationships. Just like in Nigerian population, for instance, Canadian populations, US populations. If we see 1990, 1991, 1992, 1993, 1985, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 
across those years, if we see an increase in population, it then means we can extrapolate. We can try to tell what the population is going to be by a particular time. That is a predictive analysis. What might happen in the future? Then prescriptive has to do with what can we do? And awesome tools like Tableau and Power BI is going to give you the power to be able to tell uh, what you should be doing. And it can also tell you what actually happened. And if you can know what happened, then you can be able to tell what you should possibly do so that you either increase your earnings, increase your possibilities, or understand some of the causative factor factors. Now, diagnostics analysis is going to be you trying to answer the question, why did it happen? If you have a store, if you have staff coming into an office and you're doing some sentiment analysis to try to gauge their opinions or some factors, and you're trying to check why some particular things happen or in terms of sales, transactionary kind of data, you want to tell why it happened, this just reminds me of Six Sigma, where you're trying to optimize based on the data you have collected across your processes. So understand that descriptive has to do with what happened, prescriptive, uh, predictive has to do with what might happen in the future, and it's a combination of all of these types of analysis that can help us make decisions. Don't forget, the end goal is to make decisions. Each of the above types has its own unique insights, advantages, disadvantages used in combination. They provide a more complete understanding of the business needs and opportunities. And when we say business needs and opportunity, we refer to all sectors. And let's look at data analysis process. Now, if you need to do analytics, what do you do? How do you do it? There are different flavors to it. There's the OSEM framework. I've discussed that on the channel. I'll put a description in the in the I'll put a link in the description. But if you want to keep it simple, typically say you will need to ask some questions. And that's why data analytics uh, uh, professionals are known to be researchers. They tend to want to answer questions. And that's why if you're trying to do an analysis, one of the first thing you want to do is you want to ask, why are you doing what you're doing? What are you looking out for? Conduct a comparative analysis between life before pandemic and life after pandemic. That is a question. Uh, look at uh, the relationship uh, between uh, earnings and standard of living in major cities across Africa. Case study of 10 cities. That is a question. If you don't ask or know the right questions that you are dealing with, then you'll be getting the wrong data. That's why you're going to see uh, people that work with data maybe not properly trained, not understanding the process. They meet you here <laughs> and they say, oh, Mr. Victor, please, I have some data. Please help me analyze it. And you're kind of asking, what are you looking for? And they're saying, please, just help me analyze the data. And you're saying, eh, what, what, is, what is the goal? You're trying to go back to the beginning of the process. What are you looking for? Because most of the times you find situations whereby we are consulting for agencies, com consulting for companies or individuals doing research. And you find that at the point where they are trying to do analysis, they didn't even look at their qu questions, research questions, to be able to know which data to collect. And imagine you're trying to analyze something and you're going nowhere because you, you had a research objective or questions but you didn't get the right data to be able to answer those questions. So it's very funny. Yes. So you need to, from day one, understand that to become a better uh, data analyst, you need, to, you need to first understand the process. And most of the times, the tool doesn't matter. You could use, Over the years, I've used this PSS, Python, uh, R, Stata, Tableau, Power BI, uh, which other tool again have I used? Uh, SQL, 
the tool does not really matter. And most of the time, the tool does almost same thing. It's not that later on, I'm going to be differentiating between these tools. And you're going to see that each tool has its own advantage. And each tool is going to be best fitted for some kind of analysis you want to do. And all of the tools can typically do everything every other tool can do. But you're going to find that tool that can do a particular task in a more simplistic manner. Take, for instance, if you're working on opinionated kind of research work where you're going to be basing your stuff on questionnaire, where you're going to be basing your stuff on, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, interview-led or, or sheets or papers, you're going to send them out. Then tools like Kobo Toolbox, tools like SPSS, tools like R is going to make a whole lot of sense and make it a little bit easier for you. If you are dealing with transactionary data, then Tableau Power BI is your best bet. And if you are going to be dealing with huge data, I mean big data, then that's where BigQuery comes in and you can start looking at some Amazon tools for analytics. Now, so like I said, the tool does not matter. You can always learn the tools, but understanding the process is very, very key, right? If you understand the process and yeah, you can master two, three tools, it's always going to be easier for you to be able to pick up other tools and learn. The reason be that for each kind of job, each kind of tax you're going to have, there's going to be a tool that will make life very easy for you. And if you are using the other tool, which will still do the job, you might be doing an overkill. So this process is very, very key. Ask Christian, get the data, investigate the data. And at times before you even start investigating the data, you try to check, did I get the right data? Did I get them in the right format? And that's where you're going to be doing some cleaning. You're going to be doing some data transformation. We're going to be doing most of these things in Excel, in Tableau, and a lot of Power BI a lot. On the series, after this series, I'm going to be looking at Power BI. I've used Power BI for the likes, like for the last 10 years. Very awesome tool. Tableau 2 is already or is another very nice tool that you can use to do quite a lot of analysis. So you can do most of those cleaning pre-processing. You can do them in Excel. You can do them in any of the tools. If you're starting out, doing it in Excel is going to be a lot much easier for you. Then you start doing some analysis. At times we call this exploratory data analysis, EDA, exploratory data analysis. In exploratory data analysis, you're trying to explore. You're trying to understand the data. You're trying to do some pie charts, some bar charts, some histogram, some, um, some uh, uh, donut charts just to see each of the items you have in your table, how does this relate to these, how many, what's the frequency, mean, medium, mode, those are the kind of things you're going to be doing in analysis. And this is not the proper data science course, this is more or less a data analytics course because in analytics, you are trying to do mostly exploratory analysis. Then in sciences, then that's where we start doing some data engineering, that's where we start doing modeling, that's where we start doing forecasting. That's where we start doing machine learning. In my spare time, I'm going to do a video that is going to differentiate the differences between data science, data analytics, machine learning, AI, and all of that. And if I see uh, a place, the right time in this training, I'm going to take my time to explain that. So understand that you need to ask questions. Things like which bicycle color is most popular with young buyers. If you sell items for a, a store, why are certain types of cancer cells exhibiting resistance to radiation treatment? So is the right questions that you ask or your research question objective that tell the type of data to collect and what variables to collect? And I'm going to give these examples to students. It's like trying to get your BMI index or rather your BMI. And BMI is body mass index. So body mass index, you want to, you want to, you're trying to do, uh, let's say calculator. You're trying to do something on weight. You're trying to check weight, uh, weight gain. You're trying to see, check for obesity and all of that. Maybe in a particular population or for working class or for persons that are in a particular sector. Now, if that's what you're doing, so you need to get the right data. It then means you need to get weight, 
you need to get height. Those are the two critical things you need to get to be able to calculate BMI or to be able to know uh, uh, whether somebody is overweight, underweight, or normal weight, or the person is obese. So, but if you if if you have the if you have the objective and you did not collect the the data, you can spend as long as you wish trying to get this data. Once you don't get the right data, you end up simulating awesome rubbish. So it's always good to be able to ask the right questions, get the right data, and in the right format. So because you can't ask people, what is your BMI? Most people, most people will not know. I know my BMI because I have a scale just by my bed. I check almost every morning, every evening, every other day. I, I, I make sure that I am um, and within normal weight, right? But a good number of persons are not going to know what their body mass index is. So you're going to ask them about their weight and their height. Then you're going to ask them in a very easy metrics, or you keep it open so that you as the analyst, you're not going to be doing the conversion, right? You're not going to be doing the conversion because you will be able to now start converting from, if the person said, I am 10 feet, then you're not going to start converting from feet to centimeter. If that's what you want to use to calculate. If the person said, I know my height in inches, then you're going to now start in the middle of the calculation. So that's what you do in doing the preparation. So that's where you do cleaning, right? Because you cannot calculate BMI index of this person in inches, this person in feet, this person, you must standardize it. Then, of course, you get the data. Once you've asked the question or you know your question, then you now know the right parameters to collect. And in this course also, we're going to be learning how to do questionnaire design. Then you start investigating the data. Then you start preparing, you analyze, then you start presenting results. So communication skills are very, very key to be able to communicate. That's why most of the times in our classes, like the last two, three classes we have, is students presenting, students doing some analysis. We just get them the data, they do the analysis, they present to other students. Because as an analyst, you are going to be showcasing uh, and bringing insight from that data to be able to help C-level executives make decisions from the data. So you're going to be telling them the why, the how you did whatever you did, and why you feel a certain decision makes a whole lot of sense. Business understanding. So analysts generally work on projects that closely follow some version of the data analysis lifecycle described above. You ask the question, the goal is uh, of each project is defined, goals for projects are based on external or internal stakeholder business requirements. So the projects you can be working on might be by a researcher, can be by an NGO, can be by a government agency, by might be by an academic uh, a person. It can be by a PhD student, a master student. It can be anybody. Now, the right questions needs to be asked, right? So once you have ask the right questions, then you're able to know what the intent, what the goal, because businesses often have different goals, right? They have different reasons why they are conducting such research. And understand that most of the time there should be a marketing budget. So it all depends on how you're going to collect the data. If your data is already ready, then you may not have any need for marketing. You might not need, have, any, have any need of uh, pushing the questionnaire. I've had situations where I need to do questionnaire. I have to pay persons to go distribute them, bring the questionnaire back. We bill it to me and all of that. How can the company make sure they are stocking the right inventory, right? So all of this is our questions uh, because analytics has to do with decisions making and the the best place you can see people trying to make decisions is in business and even for 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 enterprises that are not uh, for profit you can still see a situation whereby they need to make decisions okay so for instance we want to know what to recommend to customers and if we know what is selling the most we can see how to negotiate for discount from our suppliers and offer that recommendation to our customers. You've seen that play that 
play out in very big stores like uh, Amazon, like DHgate, like Alibaba, like Jumia, and uh, um, um, Best Buy. These big stores, they deal with a lot of data. So the data tells them what should what they should propose to customers because if they see that okay certain you have a lot of customers between um, that have that have this kind of interest that's why see in most of those stores they don't allow you to start shopping when you have a new account without you indicating your interest those interests they are collecting at the time you're entering into the platform is to be able to help them do further suggestions uh, in 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 sciences data sciences we normally uh, say things like you trying to create a recommender system. So a recommender system is going to help do recommendations on what is best uh, based on certain type of variables. So project portfolio is very key. So if you are still on by this time, get over to GitHub and create an account. Get over to Medium and create an account. Uh, get over to Tableau and create an account. So we're going to be using those three accounts to like push most of the work. Make sure you have a LinkedIn account because all of the things we're going to be doing, we want to like create a portfolio, online portfolio, we want to create a library where we're going to be pushing most of these things. So because communication skills are very crucial for data analysts. So you want to be able to share uh, what you have designed, the nice dashboards you've created with Tableau, uh, a more common way for data professionals to present projects is on sites designed by, and for persons that if you have some little funds, you can get to southtechhosting.com and buy a, a, a simple name in your name. If your name is Victor Maxwell Zugabag or Victor Maxwell Gates or Victor Maxwell Laptop, .info or .com, buy a domain name and you can journal and it serves as your portfolio. If you want to have something that is self-hosted, if you want to use something free, set up a GitHub account, set up a Tableau account, set up a Medium account, and um, get ready because we're going to be pushing stuff to these platforms. On GitHub account, we'll release a guideline for you to, be able to create a README file. So a README file is a file that tells about that particular project. So on each repository, we're going to I'm going to re release a separate video like hands-on, or we're going to do it live, uh, maybe YouTube live, once we're done with this phase of the training on how to set up the account. But I think setting up the account is going to be very easy for you. But creating a readme file, so this is like the details you can have for each of your readme files. So the readme files tells other professionals what you are working on, what you are doing, and how they can also co collaborate or replicate what you have done. So you want to make sure that you have your project title, the demo link where somebody can view it or the image. Then a table of content, if you need to have one, then business understanding, you want to tell us what you're trying to do. Then data understanding, the screenshots, then the technologies that you used. For some analysis, you can say, okay, I used Excel, I used SQL. For some analysis, you can say, I used Excel, I used the... Uh, Tableau. So make some analysis. You can say I used Excel. I used the uh, 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 what's it called SQL. I use uh, Tableau. Set up how you set up how you like uh, started from start to finish. Then uh, whether you are still in progress or whether you uh, whether you just started or you're in progress or you just finished. And if you got the data from somewhere else, if you got the data from an external source, like um, also open an account on Kaggle. Right? So Kaggle is spelled uh, K-A-G-G-L-E. So open an account on Kaggle, open an account on medium.com, right? Open an account on github.com, open an account on Tableau Public. I think I did few visualization, Tableau Public, yes. So Tableau Public. So create an account on Tableau Public. So we're going to be pushing some of our visualizations on these platforms. You see the visualization, visualizations of other persons. We're going to be pushing some things here. Then create a GitHub account, right? Then, uh, so data analysts, the uh, programmers, the uh, developers, uh, you could push your code here. You could push all of the things you're working here. You could get inspiration here also. 
then you open an account also on Medium. So Medium, you could tell a story about what you're working on. Then op uh, open an account on Kaggle. On Kaggle, you could see a, quite a lot of data, quite a lot of work, you get inspiration, you could also learn, right? So make sure everyone at this moment, you have a Kaggle, a Medium, a GitHub, and a Tableau public account. Okay, so the summary of uh, this very first phase is that we've understood uh, that data analysis is to help us make decisions, is to provide insight, and there are different types. Descriptive tells us what happened in the past. Predictive, what might happen in the future. Prescriptive, what should we do? Diagnostic, why did it happen? So those are the kind of insights we can get from data. Imagine you having... A, a hospital and they have, uh, I remember when we were doing data analysis for a uh, healthcare professional sometime last year, and somebody inboxed me and said, I had no wonder, my boss used to tell me, we've been sleeping on data, we've been sleeping on data. Yeah, the boss understand what amount of decision he can make out of data, but this team, the staff can't provide insight from those uh, data. So we want to use combination of all of these things to be able to better understand our business and look at opportunities, right, for good. Then uh, the six phases are you asking questions. And I told you that if you, if you don't ask the right questions, you might, go, you might not use the right data. If you, write the, if you ask the right questions and you don't examine it properly, you might get the wrong data and you might not know what you're trying to analyze at the end of the day. So the six processes are very, very key. Then project portfolio, I've told everyone, if you are still listening at this moment, and if you have questions, you can make a comment. Then also, let me know if you're learning. Let me know if you're having some uh, insights, some understanding. Then also, make sure you open those, I think about four accounts after the to open. Kaggle, GitHub, Tableau Public, and uh, Medium. Okay, I think that's all for this series. In the next chapter, we're going to be looking at getting started with data gathering and investigation. See you in the next series.